if I could have your attention for one moment. Thank you for attending Chewing the Fat. There now follows a short audience announcement concerning safety. Would patrons please desist from using flash photography during this performance? Please also switch off all mobile cell phones, pagers, personal stereos, and please refrain from smoking cigarettes or cigars in the vicinity of the stage. One more thing. Uh, I've been handed an urgent police message. Very serious. Uh, would the owner of a Scarlet Nissan Sunny registration S767XCS please remove it from outside the exit? The Sunny is situated beside a sky blue Maserati and a solid silver Shogun. Enjoy tonight's show. Thank you for listening. Sir James, are you excited? I don't mind telling you I'm absolutely pushing my kicks. Oh. Well, my drawers are absolutely sodden and all. Nowhere has a finer tradition in the theatre than old Gleska. I know, it's just one big gallus palace of variety. Oh. You only have to look at what heritage, the Empire, the Metropole, the Tivoli. The Ashoka. <laughs> Fabulous five past six show. Oh, they've all played here. Stanley Baxter, Jimmy Logan, Christian. <laughs> oh, Chris McClure, the chanter that knows all the banter. Uh, Christian. Chris McClure. So good they named him twice. <laughs> and let's not forget our famous music hall tradition. Ooh, I belong to Glesky. Do you know Glesky too? <laughs> And you know what they say about Glesky audiences, Gary? What's that, my wee me? When they hate you, they really hate you. And when they love you, they're pish! Oh! <laughs> Absolutely steaming boats. Minions! Roaring! Gutter! Bluttered! Stoches! Miraculous! Paralytic! Jake! Ooh, my heat's pure bottle and the banter of the bevy's nearly as intoxicated as a half bottle of the bucket. Oh, the famous bucket tonic. What could be finer than a few swallies of the azure neck to then conk and upper clothes? Oh, Gleska's a good laugh. It's just one big humongous crack. <laughs> The crack in Glesk is far superior than it is in some places I could mention. Here you, wait a minute, are you referring to the bastard capital of Dina? <gasps> <laughs> Scotia's midden seat, they're absolute. Head the ball. Aye, aye, but you could do worse than going to Edinburgh for a day out. Away you go, Gary, your arse is partially covered. <laughs> I know, I'm only pulling your rubber dingy. <laughs> <laughs> Here now, Gary, to see us through the show. I've got your favourite. Oh, you dullion, tell me it's Jub Jubes. You read my napper. Oh, Jub Jubes, you dancing jobby. Oh, hey, oh, oh, don't go crashing the hail poke now. As if I'd end up looking like Fat Bobby out of Wally. A rab ho! A rab ho, the famous Glesca greedy guts. Oh, classic. Here, seeing you've been good enough to dish out your swedgers, I feel it's only fit and proper to give you a chainsy cake. Opera glasses, you wee minx. Where'd you pick them up? Some antiques fair. Indeed, I did not. I bought them down the barrows. Oh, the barrows! Tagged at 112 pounds, but I managed to haggle the stall holder down to 107. Oh, well, that's the beauty of the barrows. I thought murder policemen were to bargain, and here did the stall holder no turn out to be a real Glesky, Jimmy. Oh, a wee Glesky ticket. Indeed, the first thing he says to me was, I saw you coming. <laughs> the ever alert, Keely. Then he goes on to inform me that these glasses were specifically calibrated for my eyes on account of them being that close together. Oh, what old famous Glesky band to do the barrels. He's a swat. Swatch away, mucker. What's the tub tonight, Gary? I hear it's a belter. Oh, it's a belter, all right. It's chewing the fat. Chewing the fat? I'm pure and totally up for this. As am I. All that patter thrown in for us tonight directly for the schemes. And uh, what's our favourite? Oh, our favourite's a lighthouse keeper. Ooh. Lighthouse keepers, gives a wee bash. You ready? Does the Pope wear a funny mitre? <laughs> Please, will you not do that? <laughs> but for why? <laughs> Just please, will you not do it? Oh, stunned! <laughs> Patters like water. Oh, where's the wee man that sees you to your seat? Oh, hang the wee man, we're here for the band. Fair enough. <laughs> Mm. 
Wank. Wank. Good guy. Wank. Wank. Good guy. What's this shite? <laughs> it's coffee, man. Ah, it's no coffee. Aye, it is, man. That's a snooty coffee. <laughs> That's a poncy coffee. That there is a mocha. <laughs> <laughs> a mocha. Here, Finley, take that silk handkerchief out your back pocket and fetch us up one of them mad nookies. Big Finley, man. <laughs> What's all that shite in the tap yet? Oh. <laughs> dear, oh dear, man, you're rubbish. You're heathen. That is mad chocolate sprinkle goodness. Oh, don't run away, finally. Fetch us up some of that mad chocolate sprinkle goodness, fell your at it. <laughs> I don't like all that shite. I just like ordinary coffee. Me and all, man. Anyway, too much coffee drives you off your heat. Caffeine and all that, you know? Hey, man. Oh, wired up with a mad coffee, man. <laughs> <laughs> Six glass of coffee inside you. Going like that, eyes hanging out. Boop, 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 boop. He's a cup of tea, he'll bring me down, man. I'm going to find that here. <laughs> I'm going to move the new keys. I've got my coffee. Yeah, yeah. Ah, but it does that. Totally, man. All right. <laughs> this place gives me the creeps, man. How, man? Theatres. <laughs> Famous for it. For what? <laughs> what is that, man? What you doing? Actors. Deed actors. This is where they come. After their deed. That's a lot of patter, man. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is where they come. Chock full of deed actors. Harry Lauder, Chick Murray. Ricky Fulton. <laughs> you tube man, he's no deed. Who's no deed? Harry Lauder. <laughs> that pub in the tune, sure. Oh. <laughs> anyway, deed ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts, man. Uh, well, you better start believing in them, boy. How? Why not? Who's that was asked to paint? That big, mad, black, creepy hoose. <laughs> I was big, fierty boss, man. Shut up! <laughs> well, a cousin, he's had to take the job because he was prat it. He's had to take the job of painting in there. And what? Ghost. Ghost of who, man? The dauber that used to live in a hoose. <laughs> Stung in the tongue by a mad bumblebee. <laughs> Killed him. Was he, was he winding it up like I? Huh? Well, that's what they say, isn't it, man? Tinny or not, that bee, it'll totally get mad and sting you, man. No, 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 just a mad bumblebee. Oh, just a mad bumblebee, I thought you actually meant, you know, a mad bumblebee. <laughs> no, I left the window open a mad but you got to let me get telling a story. I fire in, man. Well, that was it, left the window open, mad bumblebee flew in. Stung him in the tongue, tongue blew up, choked him, died. Ah, oh, it's totally mental, man. <laughs> Big fat, swelled up, mad stung tongue, man. <laughs> Death by tongue. Yeah. Anyway, cousin's finished paper in the fireplace wall, you know. Knackered. Sits down. Cup of tea out of the flask, feet up. Zzzz. Having a mad kip like that. What a bee! What a bee! bee. <laughs> then he hears a swishing noise. Then a voice. Come here, you wee bastard. <laughs> I'm gonna flatten you with this rolled up newspaper. Shush, shush. Come here, you wee bastard. I'm gonna flatten you with this paper. That's oh, no, 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 plenty, Tony. Aye. Oh, no, man. What are you doing now? That's him stung in the tongue. You can't hear a bastard word he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no.
Okay, that was the very wonderful Martika and Martika's Kitchen, especially for all our guests here at St. Jude's Retirement Home. I know many of you senior listeners tuned in today, hoping to hear an hour of solid gold, golden oldies, but I'm afraid we still haven't managed to locate the key to the cupboard with all the old records in it. Still, are we going to let that get us down? You're fucking right. Of course we're not. Let's move right on with your request. I've just been handed these, thanks. So in no particular order, we'll start off with a delightful little note from a Betty McCarroll in Award. Now, Betty would like to dedicate a record to the new male nurse, Andy, that's just started bathing her. She says he's a lovely laddie, and um, she describes in great detail what she likes about him most. OK, skimming to the bottom of this letter, then, uh, she also mentions a lovely big... Bobby. No, she's still talking about Andy. Anyway, we'll move on. I know you asked for Frank Sinatra, Betty, but we'll give you the next best thing we can find. Bucks Fizz. Hello. Hello, Betty. How are you? Hello. Spoke to you the other week there about uh, recording that tea time radio oh, show. Uh-huh. People's wartime recollections. Uh-huh. Lovely to meet you. I'm just I, I just... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, we're looking for as much personal detail as possible, so if you could just see what you remember and try and speak towards the microphone. <coughs> well, the main thing I remember about the war was the bombings, you know? All the bombings and the blackouts and what have you. Yes, the blackouts. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, when you heard the siren, that was it. was light shooting up with the black curtains, you know? But uh, the blackouts were an exciting time for us because, well, See, you never knew who you were up the close with. <laughs> um, h- how do you mean up a close? Well, you'd be up the close with some young fella getting plunged and... <laughs> all you had to go in was a light in any of your ciggy. <laughs> um, we'll stop there for a second, <laughs> Betty. It's, uh... <laughs> it's a tea time show. We don't want to offend anybody, so maybe not use that word. Siggy. No, plunged. Oh, sorry, son. No, it's all right. We've just got to watch what we transmit. So tell me, Betty, what did your husband do during the war? I was just glad your Charlie was away, you know, because uh, when the cat's away... Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Mind this one fella I met, he'd managed to uh, get off the draft and I couldn't decide his horns, you know. His, his hands? Ah, his fingers. They're too long and thick. Well, a big bunch of bananas, you know, see, see, he couldn't, he couldn't fire the rifles, you know, but, eh, uh, he could pull my trigger. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> mine, I was, eh, uh, mine, I was sitting next to him during the raid, and, well, the lights were out, and that was it. My skirt was up, my drawers were down, and he got, he got fired. <laughs> My pal Rose, she's sitting next to him. She's getting pelters and all. Everybody thought we were screaming on account of the bombs. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Betty, we, we, we can't. It's, it's a sensitive time for a lot of people. Oh, but listen, son, I was mortified, you know, because, I mean, when the lights went up, there's me all hanging out, getting plenty, and Rose's bare ass was up in the air for everybody to see as well, do you know? I mean, she was totally pummeled. We were ruined by that boy. Betty as we're walking about like Groucho Marx for a fortnight, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Betty, we can't use that. It's, it's not proper. Sorry, son. It's all right. Well, uh, we'll try a different subject. Right. How about rationing? It must have been difficult for you to clothe and indeed keep your entire family together. How many children did you have? Eh, Eleven. Uh, Nine be different feathers and two be my Charlie. Did you still manage to get food on the table? I wasn't bothered, you know, because in fact, Rose and I just sell our ration books because we could get as much meat and stuff as we wanted. In the black market? No, out the shops. <laughs> no, I mean, take Cochrane's, for example. Now, you used to get cheese out of Cochrane's, and, and cheese in them days came in, in big, huge chunks the size of a puffy, you know? And, and with your ration books, see, you could only get about two ounces of cheese, but. Uh, well, I came to an arrangement with a man that ran the shop. He, uh, she says to me, if I went in the back and dropped him and let him rattle me in the big cheese, I could just take him as much as I could claw. And just claw. <laughs> 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 
It was the same story in the butchers as well. There was, oh, now, a young, a young lad worked in the butchers and, oh, I mean, he was a good 10 years younger than me, you know, and he only looked like a boy, but, uh, my, what a size, you know. <laughs> you could have, uh, you could have uh, hung a duffel coat on it with two bottles of iron brew in it. <laughs> Imagine it was here, you just... Uh, we'll return to the war. Uh, it's, it's, it's 1943. Uh, the, the Americans have descended on Glasgow. How did they fit in? <laughs> oh, very well. <laughs> See, I mean, they were big, good-looking boys, you know, the Americans. A lot of people didn't like the Yanks being here, but, well, me and my pal Rose, you know, I mean, we were never asked them. Because, <laughs> because they had money. You know, I could get you things in Ireland and that. Show you a good time. I mean, what was I meant to be doing anyway? You know, my, my Charlie had been away for three years, and by that time I was absolutely gagging for it. I was. <laughs> Please, try and keep it light. Light, happy memories. Well, well that was a happy memory. You know what I mean? You, you had to make light of things. Even though there was a war on, you had to see the funny side, well, you know? Yes, the funny side. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so, so there was a funny side to it, wasn't there, Betty? Aye, there was. And the funny side was... There's my Charlie away in Tobruk fighting for king and country. And there's me and Rose round the back of the barrel lines where skirts round my neck getting pumped right and some of us. Dirty cows, they called us, but we weren't the fair. Good, yes. good. Did you enjoy it? That's plenty, Betty, thank you. The Americans were hungry. That's back. plenty, thank you, Betty. <laughs> Tell me, have you, have you got any memories that, 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 that don't involve sex? Aye, I do, son, aye. aye. No. <laughs> Have you ever seen your granny making water down by the old mill stream? She pishes for an hour and a quarter <laughs> and you can't see your arse for steam. <laughs> Countdown, hurry up, Barry. <laughs> you two are getting beat today. You know, just enjoy the game, Harry. Games are not about enjoying, Linda. It's the competition that makes them so engaging. Woo, engaging. Good word, Harry. <laughs> Six, eight letters. Right. Oh, oh. You'd be off to a flyer if you got that today, eh? Yeah. I probably would have only managed gain or something. Uh, that's only four, George. I'd have had you beat there, you know. I've got engine out of the letters that you're engaging. Have you? Have you? Have you? Uh, Engine's a great word, isn't it? Uh, it's got two E's, but isn't it, Linda? In any case, hasn't he started yet, has it? Here we go. <coughs> B. M. I. R. N I X X E N Tough letter or something to do. Tough for some, Linda, yes, tough for some. <laughs> Man, these letters. And another thing, Linda, would you mind not reading the letters out as they come out the television? We can all see them. There aren't any blind people in here I can see. You see any blind people, George? Play the game, Harry. Come on. Right, how many have you got? I've got eight. 
Any of you got jobs? My word's a belt. Oh, it may very well be a belter, Linda. <laughs> if you could just try and sit in it for two minutes till I find out how many George's got. Carry on, George. Same. Eight. <laughs> What's your word? My word's Ren Minby. Will you shut up for a minute? I'm, you don't see I'm talking to George. Can you ca Hey, what? Ren Minby. What in the name of hell's Ren Minby? <laughs> shut up, you're not getting that. <laughs> <clears throat> um, that's, uh, that's what I've got, Harry. <laughs> what does it mean, then, this Ren Mimby? I'll tell you what it means. George, excuse me a wee minute. I know you know what it means. <laughs> Linda, Ren Mimby. Well, I, I don't know what it means. <laughs> but it's definitely a word. I've heard it being used before, well, Harry. That's not exactly good enough, is it, Linda? <laughs> you don't know what it means, you're no getting it. <laughs> Actually, as long as it's in the dictionary, you're entitled to your points, Harry. I wondered what kind of world it would be if we all floated about in Linda's world, eh? <laughs> Spouting words we didn't know the meaning of, eh? <laughs> Where's the dinky-doo? It's in the rumbly-bumbly. <laughs> what is a dinky-doo, by the way? Oh, I don't know. I only know it's a word exactly. No points! Renminbi is the currency for the old Republic of China. That's right, it's Chinese money. That's right, it's Chinese money. <laughs> this is you hoovering that information off of George here, passing it off as your own information. It is a word. Well, fine, you've both got eight points then. What, uh, what was your word, Harry? Bin. <laughs> That's right, a receptacle for refuse. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, receptacle, that's a cracker, Don't start Harry. me, George, don't <laughs> start me. Now it's time for Arts News, interpreting for the Neds tonight. <laughs> Rab McGlinchey. Or eight troops. <laughs> Into his second night at the centre of the contemporary Muse in St Andrews is controversial Melbourne performance artist Steinway Sam Hurst. He'll be exhibiting extracts from his seminal work, Band Arts. Aye, man, it's big, man. I don't see you do it, man. It is box, man. Quality, man. One of them uh, Edinburgh Fest big bastards. You might have a bit messy, was, man. Squizzles onto the stage like that, no danger. I can't remember what the name of the show was, but what was it again? Arse Bandits. That was the name of the show. <laughs> The most contentious sequence of the piece occurs when Sam Hurst confronts our assumptions and preoccupations with human wastage. It's a starkly graphic presentation, daringly wandering into the ether of our own transgressions. He's done a shite in a jar. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. A place was honking, by the way. A bird's well, ah, ha, ha, uh, just play it to it, man. Unbelievable. By the way, you might have seen the way he done it, man. It was a class act. I'll give him that, man. Bang! <laughs> Bang! Beautiful. Just fell out of him, man. He must be on a special diet. He certainly hasn't been drinking this stuff because it wasn't the orange, you know what I mean, man? Now let's look at the main points again. The government today announced a delight at the success of the new scheme to crack down on the illegal claiming of Social Security benefit. See, the bastard can carry on trying to gyro out these Nazi bastards. Unbelievable. <laughs> I don't sign on using the name Rab McGlinch, you know. Tony Patterson. I, 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 it emerged that one particularly brave informant in the Strathclyde region had tipped off the authorities to scores of dishonest claimants as part of the Rat on a Rat initiative. This guy's grassing everybody, man, getting money off of social for grassing people. It's unbelievable, man. He's done my cousin. My cousin's got a paint and decorating job right still on the brew. My cousin's got an off his plate. Two wives, two birds and three wains, know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> when you hear this, man, when you hear this, an old granny's won a hundred quid out the bingo, man, and he's stuck her in and all that's brutal, isn't it? <laughs> As well as receiving a considerable financial reward, the informant has since been relocated to an undisclosed address. Undisclosed address. One, two, three, Arcadia Avenue, just above the bookies, Bishop Briggs, man. Oh, we'll go up and see how the snoops, the lights getting snooped on a bastard! Ah! <laughs> Good night. Night, troops. Hello, Fast Buzz. Page of service. Can I take your message, please? Thank you. Did you say Chris? Yes, and was that Bowl? Uh-huh. And did you say Faye? Okay, end of message. Message reads, bring us some smoky bacon, Chris. 
and a bowl of ginger fay the van. Message sent. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Fast Buzz. Pager service. Can I take your message, please? Yes, did you say bot? And was that royal? Okay, and did you say sin? Okay, and a message? Message reads Tam Sharky's dog, bot or Alison. <laughs> she had to go to the royal for a jag. <laughs> it was a sin. So it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I saw his show at the tramway. Yeah. The uh, multimedia thing uh -huh. was mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, really I'm haven't seen to anything to like it in a long, long time. Yeah. Better get on anyway. Taxi to Paris for some carrots. A, a taxi to Paris for some carrots. Taxi to Paris for carrots. <laughs> taxi to Paris for some carrots. Taxi, taxi to Paris, Paris for some carrots. <laughs> taxi. Taxi. <laughs> Ooh, it's clacking in it. Uh, Ooh, it's my shit. Ah! Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh. What are you supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, Ali. Sorry, Ali. We'll start the workshop right away. Take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. Okay. <clears throat> Want to look at some strong emotions today, people. Right, yeah, strong right. feelings. Strong emotions. <laughs> Anger. Lies. Right. Suspicion. Suspicion. <laughs> We're going to need a couple of volunteers. Oh, I'll be yeah, OK, i will come then. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. And you are? Ronald Villiers. Say hello. Hello. To Rebecca. All right. Hello there. Hi. I actually worked for you before. Uh, it was a wee touring show, The Silver Puppet. I was inside the puppet. <laughs> no? Don't remember me? Charlie. OK. Here's the scenario. Rebecca, you're a housewife. You're married to Ronald. Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> You've been having an affair. Ronald? Oh. You're coming home right. to confront Rebecca. Want to say something to her about it? You're suspicious. <laughs> right. You think she's been having an affair. Aye. It's confrontation time. Okay. Side. Right, yeah. Okay. I'm coming home. <laughs> right. <clears throat> <laughs> um, <laughs> what, 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 what? That's, that's me locking my car. Well, just start from the front door. All right, just leave a car lying there. <laughs> what? I live in a phone in the block. <laughs> right, you, you boot. been having an affair. What? Where did you get that from? He tell me. <laughs> I'm just saying you tell me, how else would I know? You can't involve me in this, I'm not in this. Well, how am I supposed to know about it? If you've no tell me, come on. 
It'll unfold. All right, in the script. Well, there's no script, Ronald. It's an improv class, yeah? All right, right. so we're just making it up. <laughs> yes, improv. We're just making it up. We're just making it up. Come on. OK. Come on. <laughs> right, you. You've been having an affair. What? Where did you get that from? <laughs> Nowhere. I just made it up. Keep making it up. Uh, we're a man that used to have an ice cream van, but now he was in the jungle. Uh, big, tall fella, one eye. Good looking bit. I'm sorry, I can't respond to that. We'll stop it there, we'll stop it there, we'll stop it there. We're smashing, we're smashing. We're going to move it on a little bit right. now and have a look at pain. All right, right. Rebecca, okay. you decide to confess. Yes, you're having an affair. See, I tell you we're having an affair. <laughs> but no, you weren't having that, were you, no? With the fella with the one eye. Ronald, this is the worst news. What news? You're crushed. Right. What news? OK, then. Start again. <laughs> right, you. You bun. <laughs> You're having an affair. Yes, I am. What news? I'm crushed. <laughs> Ronald! You're crushed. I know, I'm after teller on that. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald, I want to see you being crushed. What? Look. Um, did you ever have a pet? Yes, a wee dog. I uh, called Spot. And what happened to it? Well, it died, I died. Well, that's great. Eh? I don't mean it's great that your dog died. To bring the pain of losing your pet to the drama. Right, OK, use that pain. Use the pain. OK. Draw right. on it. OK. You're having an affair. Yes, I am. Oh, my wee dog's fire. <laughs> no. Oh, no. The taxi just came through the corner and flattened it out. <laughs> and I'm shouting up to my sister, Annie, Annie, you're going to have to bring me a poly bag. <laughs> oh, his guts are hanging out its ass, Annie. Annie. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Aye, that's him just back from Magaluf and eh, my my. Mega muff, he calls it. <laughs> he's mental, isn't he? <laughs> Mind you, he's got a brilliant tan. It's done him the world of good. Do you know what he said as well? That he missed me when he was away. Aye. Well, I couldn't go, could I? Because I've got one of the old um, red passports and Derek's got one of the new blue bands. So, but Derek did try and get me a blue band. He queued and he queued for hours at the passport shop, but um, well, by the time he got to the front of the queue, they had sell out, he said. <laughs> so, but the thing is, I couldn't even get my photo taken, right, to get the passport, because Derek says, like, my teeth are all fillings with magnets in them. So see if I'd went into the photo booth, it would have just exploded, right? <laughs> that would have been it broke. Then I'd have had to pay the arcade a thousand pound. And I've not got a thousand pound, have I, Mum? Oh, well, no, no, anyway, because Derek says that banks are for poofs. So he just took all the money out the bank and he gave it to his brother Ian to keep. And I think that's better. I think that's a better idea. Do you know what he did, though? He was away earlier there. And what did he do? He brought me back 200 fags. Imagine that. Him away earlier there and wasted his money in fags for me. <laughs> that man pure loves me. So he does. No, um, no, he can't come down the new mum. No, he's looking after our guest. Well, you know I've got somebody staying, I do. I told you. She's one of the uh, Kosovonian refugees. Aye. Her name's Kylie. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Derek smuggled her back on the plane the way back. He's awfully caring that way. Uh, well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sleep down here in the dog's basket, the new, because I'll be no bother. And I'll not even be bothered by the telling or nothing, because they've taken that up the stair with them. Aye. Because, well, you see, Derek's teaching Kylie to speak English. Yes. Aye. Yes. Oh, listen. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Aye, that's him teaching her how to say yes, Mum. <laughs> aye. It's going to take her a while to get the hang of that one. Uh, no, aye, I'm proud. I'm proud, Mum, because how many wives 
can say that they have got a husband that looks after complete strangers for the other side of the world, eh? Especially 17-year-old ones. That man is a total saint. Do you know what he did the other day? He bought her a trackie out the catalogue. Imagine that, eh? Well, it was me that paid for it, right? But Derek says he'll pay me back, because he is a bit short, the new bit is a pure shame. Because see the Kosovanians, they have never been allowed fags, and they have never been allowed clays, nor nothing over in, in Germany under that Saddam Hussein. <laughs> He's a bastard, Derek says, and I agree with him, do you know? So uh, I just gave her my fags to smoke and all. I thought that was the decent thing. But uh, I am so happy to have her here, Mum. I really am, because as Derek says, it does not matter where we are free, we're all the same, we're all the same. And uh, do you know, I know what he means? Because Kylie, funnily enough, is the spitting image of that Caroline McWilliams daughter. Aye, stays down the road, aye. She'd be about 17 and all the new. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, I suppose uh, I better yes. go and... Oh, yes. 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 Listen, listen. Yes. 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 Yes
No more get them developed at Boots, eh, Jack? No. <laughs> get that manky rubbish. Oh, yeah, yeah. What about your hole, man? <laughs> I had my hole this morning. <laughs> For who? Linda in Baltimore. <laughs> Linda in Baltimore? How do you shake somebody in bloody Baltimore? Well, it's quite easy. What you do is, you type in a load of clatty words at this end, right? And she does the same at her end, a lot of manky words in there. And that's you away. Cyber pumping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Right. Yeah. Let me in there. Oh, listen, look. What you've got to do is, you've got to type in chat, and then you put USA, because that's where it all happens, all you right. see. There you are now, Cathy from Michigan Online. Do you see that? Oh, aye. Aye. What new? All right, well, hey, hello. This is Jack. My friend Victor would like a word. Oh, hello, hello, Victor. Victor hey. All right. <laughs> Good day. All oh, right. Give that to me, the maestro. <laughs> what are you doing? Where's the H key? I want to type hello. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. <laughs> you dictate and I'll type. Right, right, right. Hey. Hey. Let's see now, eh? Hello, Cathy. Hello, Cathy. Is it your nookie you're after? <laughs> I'm not typing that. Oh, no. Because you're wading in too heavy. You need a bit of finesse. You'll never get the kicks off her talking like that. <laughs> hey, let's see now. Ask her, eh, what the weather's like. That's better, right. What's the weather like? Stateside. Ooh, nice touch, <laughs> Oh, bikini, bikini weather! weather. Oh, 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 oh. She's ganting for ah, it. Aye, she's ganting for it. Right, aye. Type that. Are you ganting for no, it? Oh, no. Come on, get it tight, man. Are you ganting for it? Yes, I oh, am. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right, what are we going to do here? Oh, hey. Come on. Oh, I'm not so sure now, Jack. <laughs> what are you on about? Oh. I'm awfully uncomfy. I mean, here's me about to get my end away, and here's you sitting in the middle of it, typing. <laughs> like, a, like a virtual gooseberry. <laughs> you can't eat typing in any kit. Oh, Jesus, look at that. Look, look. Do you want cyber sex oh. now? Come on, or we're going to lose her here. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, turn your head away and type, aye. <laughs> away you go, oh. you dirty bastard, Jay. It's not in my house, fella. Ah, <laughs> stupid idea. What do you want to do? Go to the bowling? The bowling? No. You want to go up the park? No. Sit for a while, no. Too wet, too wet, Jack. Scat lovers. Right, yeah. Okay, then. Right, <laughs> smash him. There we go. It's a lot of shite, really. Oh. Gentlemen, may we have your attention for one moment? We regret to announce that the second half of tonight's Chewing the Fat has been delayed. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen technical difficulties, we are unable to raise the stage curtain. That's a lot of nonsense. There we are. Give that curtain ten seconds on me as right as rain. Hola! Hola! What's your old snigger in a boat? Me? Me no, it's a sniggering. I must have sniggered it. Give a lash of the interval. Interval? Uh, smoke a joint. 
<laughs> Was your heel joint? Aye, five skin off. <laughs> Pofty, pofty, out the fire exit, fleeing out my box. <laughs> Call up, five skin off, do a greedy bastard. <laughs> Call us your munches? Aye, munches. Where should you go? Went to kiosk. Mala, what do you have? Ah, uh, had a corneta, uh, tub, umpa ice bowl, umpa zoom, umpa mivy, as he feast, ah, uh, four funny feet. <laughs> Elka feeling sick? Aye. <laughs> Elka guts a freezing. Poor <laughs> ugly like it has sheed. Oh. See the woman? Was a woman? Was a blonde? My finger polis, oh no. Not a polis, punter. Oh, now she's paranoid. I shall think she's a polis. Punter. She's a punter. Polis. Punter. Polis. Aye. Not a polis. But she's a punter. Punter, 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 punter. Hello, hello, hello. Ah! Oh, scary bastard. <laughs> No. <laughs> 
apart. I, well, at least there's a start. I found the cat. Snowball. I remember when this cat used to be white. Morning, sir. Aye, <coughs> morning. That everything for you then? Yeah, aye, that's right, thanks. Not buying cigarettes today, no? Eh, no, I go on a well then. Right, yeah. So that's a uh, steak and kidney pie and a pint of milk and uh, 20 pence in hedges. That's uh, six pounds eighty, please. There you go. Oh, right. thanks. <clears throat> that, uh, that was a lovely suit you were wearing the other day. Sorry? You had a wee pinstripe number on. So you through the window. Ah. Oh, aye, right, aye. aye. Thanks. Looked like quite a gathering. It was a funeral. Was it? I thought so. Because there was a woman in here, she had a Marks and Spencer's trouser suit on, she'd never been in before. And she bought four loaves, a tub of margarine, she bought four tins of beef paste, and she bought four tins of fish paste as well, and about 36 French fancies. <laughs> I thought to myself, she's making a lovely spread. She'll be doing somebody proud. Aye, that was my auntie, you know. She was doing the food for the, <coughs> the wake. Oh, that's a shame, that, eh? Big do, was it? Oh, aye, it was. A big aye. turnout, aye. Good, good. Lots of family and friends there, was it? That's right, aye. That's nice, eh? Mm. All your loved ones round about you in your time of need, eh? Don't really get much of a chance to go to funerals myself, you know. I'm kind of stuck in this shop. Day after day after day after day. Still, life goes on, doesn't it? Does I? So how come you're uh, buying food today? Eh? You're buying food. Usually when you come in, you just buy your cigarettes. And of course, it's your mum that buys the food. I'll tell you how I know it's your mum. Because you're a spitting image. Aye. In fact, wait a minute. She usually makes you a steak and kidney pie for scratch, does she know? Yes, that's right. She comes in with a glint in her eye and she buys the pastry fresh, knowing that her wee boy is in for a lovely big treat when he comes home for his work, eh? Isn't that nice, yeah? That's good here, you know? I would have loved a wee boy myself to cook for and to clean up after, but. No, I never really got the chance to start a family, did I? I've been stuck in this shop day after day after day after day after day after day, you know. So how come you're buying ready-made steak pies when your mum makes them fresh in the oven for you? I buried my mother last week. <laughs> I thought so, cos she's the only one that smokes these menthol cigarettes. There's hunters in them there, they're all piling up. Look at that. <laughs> there, there. You missing your mummy? Aye. Well, listen, here's a cookie crazy idea. I can't get away the new, but see when the shop shuts at six, why don't I pop round? Be no bother. No bother at all. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get you something out of the freezer, maybe chicken, Kiev, uh, or fish fingers and some oven chips. I'll make them, I'll do a wee bit of cleaning for you as well, and we can have cups of tea and some individual fruit trifles and a wee chat. No, what do you it's, say it's to all that? Right, you're all right. You're no fine, bother thanks. at all. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I could eat, I'll smoke a couple of those cigarettes if you like as well. No, well, I, I'm going to get back. No, I, I don't mind, I really but no problem. Go. I'll tell you, here's, here's the deal. Smokers, I'll smoke some of those cigarettes your mum used to smoke, and I'll wear a dress. Hello, I'm your mum. Wear a dress. There you are. Look at that. You stay away from me. Oh, come on. Come to mummy, you know you want to. Come on, son, it's me. Not working at all, no, no, no. No prospects, nothing on the horizon, no, no. What about your wife? Does she... No, oh, she's never had a job, no, right, right, right. And you're looking to get a mortgage. <laughs> oh. Come in.
All right, my man. <laughs> oh, eh. Uh, 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 morning, sir. Mr. Gallagher, isn't it? Yes, that's right. I... Please do take a seat. Now, you're here to discuss a business loan, I take it? Yes. Why would you like to run me through it? Well, basically, it's a uh, sports socks. <laughs> Sports socks, eh? Yes, eh. Uh, my plan is to sell the sports socks. Just sports socks? Yes, I'll be sticking exclusively to the sports socks, aye. Do you have a premises in mind at all? Yes, Argyle Street in Glasgow. <laughs> so is this a freehold unit or a stall within a complex, is it? No, no, it's uh, Argyle Street itself, mate, you know? A couple of crates outside of Marks and Spencer. <laughs> so surely you'll get some trouble from the council there or the police. Or... No, 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 man. You see, with my business colleague Davy keeping the edgy, you know, we can <laughs> pretty much scarf over the crates if we're spotted by the fill. Uh, polis. You have a marketing strategy at all? Yes, sir. Please. Sport socks. <laughs> Sport socks. <laughs> Air are your sport socks. <laughs> Two for a pound. <laughs> Two for a pound. <laughs> Air are your sport socks. Well, that seems relatively low risk and without any appreciable overheads, I can see. Um, how much were you looking for? Uh, 20,000. <laughs> yes, 20,000. Well, I think the bank would be perfectly happy to lend you that money, yes. Dancer. Probably have it. <laughs> probably have it with you in a couple of days. Right, Only one thing, Mr. Gallagher, could I offer you a wee bit of advice concerning diversifying your product base? Yes, certainly, sir. Pokemon Care! Yeah! Here's your Pokemon Care there. Two for a pound. Two for a pound. Ah, Captain. It's grand to be back aboard the good ship Pearl Necklace. Yes, indeed. You can still almost smell the salty fish off her. <laughs> what was your last post, Bosun? I was minding the stern for Captain Gaylad aboard the Jolly Dung Funnel. <laughs> Alas, we rimmed our helmet and Gaylad went down with the fudge packers. <laughs> oh, well, I expect that's the way we'd have wanted it. Still, it's been a grand day for the catch. We almost drained Wanker Crag dry. Indeed, Captain. Our scrot nets are bulging. The catches of Fanny Mackerel and Deep Sea Knobbers and Striped Randy Clits. <laughs> We even managed to chase off that stray vessel fishing in illegal waters. I can't stomach foreign seamen. I, I couldn't believe it, Captain, when he dropped his creels and snatched our Nadger crabs. What ship was it? Was it the Lavaja? Senor Quim aboard El Felicio. Uh, how do you know this? I saw him from the lookout post. Ah, uh, curses. That donkey jumper shouldn't be dropping his bait north of Porto Tuato. He must have shot over the arse crack by cover of night. Ah, well, blow the fellatio. Set a course for sodden cock. He heading southwesterly through Clackerbag Bay. Sodden cock port's been dick wiped by the squall, Captain. Well, you're just going to have to locate a warm jism channel. Captain, we're receiving a distress call from the good ship Kipper Minge. Her hull's been gobbled. Wait a minute. The Kipper Minge, can she not summon her sister vessel, the Stinky Clitty? He's moored at Felch Cove, Captain. What's the Kipper Minge's position? Captain, <laughs> 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 20 degrees west of Dry Ride Rock. <laughs> well, I, 
That's too dangerous. We'll be torn to bits in the dauber wash. <laughs> Tell her we'll meet up with her at Gagging Slag Point. Captain, oh. our stern's been breached. Oh, I know I felt it. Is there any hope for the tail sphincter? The, the tail sphincter's been ripped asunder by a filthy sea beast. Oh, in the name of sweet mercy. Oh, was it a roughly ridden furry clam? No, Captain, it was a dirty big brown starfish. What about the blowhole? The blowhole's in flame, Captain. Its mighty tentacles are swollen. Well, we'll just have to try and penetrate it with the spunk harpoon. The spunk harpoon's only half cocked, sir. It'll never shoot its bolt. Tarnation. What now, sir? We'll just have to grit our teeth and ride it out. <laughs> Oil up your dung funnel, son. I'm coming below. Ah, come in, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kelso. Kelso, yes, Mr. Kelso. I've got your file here, Mr. Kelso. Now, it says here that you've been claiming benefit for uh, 11 years. Right. And in that time, you've had no offer of employment. That's right. Also says here your preferred occupation is poet. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why the DSS is reviewing your case, Mr. Kell. So it's an awful long time to be claiming benefit. Yeah. You see, by, by saying you're a poet, you're sort of boxing oh, yourself wait, 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 wait. I am, I am a poet. Well, I'm not saying you're not a poet. I'm just saying that by being a poet, you're sort of precluding yourself from other job opportunities. Well, what is it you want me to do about that? What kind of stuff do you write? What kind of stuff do I write? What do you mean, what kind of stuff do I write? Well, you've, never, you've never been published, you know. Have you ever considered that might be a factor? What exactly is you're getting at here? Are you saying that my stuff's rubbish and that's the reason I never get published? My stuff's rubbish, is that what you're saying? Could I hear one? You want to hear one? Yeah. Okay. A distant smash will do. The worker. <laughs> <laughs> worker. That's ironic, isn't it? Sorry? No, carry on. Sorry. A distant smash willed over by the drone of Danny's hammer pounding squarely, callous thumbs, glazed eyes. Miles from home amidst an industry mayhem awaits the bell that tolls dinner cheese again. Well, it's pish, isn't it? <laughs> I beg your pardon? You know, sadly burns, you know what I mean? Well, wait a minute, it's not meant to be burns, I wrote it, it's not burns. I've, uh, I've written a wee poem. Want to hear it? Uh, go ahead. OK. <clears throat> Eleven years on a downward... What's it called? Uh, <laughs> Kelso's Fate. Ha, <laughs> that's ironic, isn't it? No. <laughs> Eleven years on a downward spiral. Every Thursday, cash the gyro. <laughs> DSS don't think it's funny. They decide to cut your money. <laughs> All your work wrapped in a parcel. Get a job, you work shy asshole. <laughs> Sylvanius, how goes the watch? All is quiet, Andronicus. Nothing stirs, not mouse, nor badger. This tranquil picture disturbeth me. You think perhaps danger lurk in the thicket? It is true. Danger and silence make happy bedfellows. Oh, how this slow moon wanes. The waning moon. But hark, the general approaches. <laughs> the hour approaches and still I wait. No news heads from the battlefield. Do the Spartans advance, or have they fled? Do my men lie bleeding, or will I and Rome live on to draw the air of triumph? This infernal waiting! This infernal waiting! <laughs> I 
I bring the news. Hold on. What's happening? I'm, I'm the courier. I'm bringing the news. Yeah, you missed your cue. Oh, no, I know that. I was reading that poster in the back there. I, I, that one, there's a big party at the end, a great big party. Three sausage rolls and drink. News going, I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Looks good. Listen, as soon as the horn goes, you come on. Right. You want me to come on with the horn? <laughs> no. No. The horn heralds your arrival with the news. <laughs> That's quite good, isn't it? What's quite good? The Herald and the News. <laughs> let, me, let me bring up a rolled up copy of the Herald. We'll bring that one. No! No, no, I'm only kidding. That's a joke. That was just a joke. Right, look, Ronald, this is a dress rehearsal. You know that, eh? Aye, I know that, uh huh. Right, well, a dress rehearsal means we don't stop. Don't stop. We go right through. All the way through. That's good that you know that. Right. We open tonight. You're aware of that? Aye, I know that, aye. Right, well, so, let's try it again. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Lawrence. Yeah, just here. The hour approaches, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the Spartans advance, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. This infernal waiting! <laughs> What's all that about? Blah, 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 blah. I'm stunning, waiting in a queue. <laughs> blah, blah. He, uh, he is queuing you. He's queuing you to get you on. It's your bit we're interested in. Right, so it's my bit you're interested in. Yes! Right, OK, then. Now, try again, please. Don't you? <laughs> Lawrence. Live on to draw the air of triumph. This infernal waiting. Have I got news for you? <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Give it me. I get used for you. Yeah. Right. I shall read it for you. Was... I shall read it because I am a belting I... reader. I read the story. I can read I can read it. Let me read it. Why don't you just let me read it? Read. Hey! What's what's going on? Uh, look, the thing is, I like to get into my part, right? Now, I'm supposed to have walked hundred miles, right? And I've only got one line in this thing anyway. Why don't you let me read it? I'm a cracking reader. Lawrence, let him read it, for God's sake. Read it, then. Fine. Read it, me. Very well. <laughs> there is nothing on it. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you why there's nothing on it. There's nothing on it because Lawrence, the actor who's playing the general, has memorised the letter. It's in his dialogue. He knows the letter! What's the point in me bringing it, then, if he knows what's in it? <laughs> That's just making me look like a prick. <laughs> Listen, Ronald, I'm sorry. We're just we're going to have to call it a day with you. Yes. No. Because you're a disruption. No, no, no. No, listen to me. Wait a minute. You're a disruption. Wait a wee minute. And it's been I... like this for weeks. Well, I am not a disruption. It's not just me. I mean, him, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Them sniggering and all that. And they never told me I was supposed to be in my berries either. Look at this. Do you know something? It is just you. It's just you. You're fired. Please go. I'm so sorry about this. Uh, I'll read in the part of the messenger. So just yes, want to be a ready voice, okay? Live on to draw the air of triumph. This infernal waiting. <laughs> I 
Can I still go to the party? No! Take five, everybody! What am I supposed to do with this? Sister was up for two nights making this as well. <laughs> Want to see her thumbs, big silver skin, pickled blisters out of them. I suppose I just wear them in my bed for gym jams or something. <laughs> no respect. I was the corpse in Taggart. <laughs> ah, well, I don't want to do Shakespeare anyway, for you are all a bunch of wankers. <laughs> Uh, hi, yes, my name's Gemma Chisholm, and I'm a, a poet, well, poetess, actually, and I'd like to read you a couple of my compositions. Thank you. First one is called, Oh, Husband, You Are a Bastard. <laughs> <clears throat> man, 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 with his man-made stench of cigarettes and man-slurped beer, loudly he leers and looms bumbly lumbering into my bedchamber. Late, he appears, leering and veery, beery and leering, and he beats, beats, beats at the gate to my perfect private flower garden, bash, bash, bashing with his hard, evil little man wand. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not about my husband, of course. That's about somebody else's. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another one here, personal favourite, it's called Dumping Ground. Thank you. Flushed, I fished for the lavatory handle, thus to sweep away all traces of his all too human movement. But the chain pools in vain. I cannot exercise his excrement. The king's throne remains soiled. The stench the horror of a stoic stool stuck to the porcelain by invisible man adhesive. An evil calling card freshly coiled each morning. His heart is closed, but the lid remains ever open. <laughs> Bastard McPhee owes me a bloody ten spot. Have you got his tenner? Get her out, you bastard. Get that tenner out. Give me two. There you are. You fool. There's that tenner. There is it. Still handy, eh, Jack? Aye, still game for it. Stop to that bastard, do you, anyway? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there she is, eh? Oh, she's lovely, so she is, eh? Well, that big heifer. <laughs> Wouldn't you be calling her a bloody heifer? That's the size of woman you want, eh? Fresh drawers on off the radiator every morning, lovely, eh? <laughs> Is that your type, eh? Big Ma Brun type? Oh, aye, absolutely, aye. Oh, well, you never know that big woman would make you a steak pie for scratch, aye. <laughs> Carrots, totties, peas, and an apple pie on the window ledge for <laughs> afterwards. Oh, marvellous, aye. <laughs> aye, she's lovely right enough, aye. Here, we ain't talk to her, Jack. Go on. Oh, give me peace, no. Here, ask her out. Oh, no, I don't Come like on, you. today's the day, man or moose. Oh, a challenge, is it, eh? Aye, boy. Some Harvey, go on. Hello there, sweetheart. I was wondering if you and I could go out for a wee bit. Piss off! <laughs> <laughs> Bumped! <laughs> she wouldn't be pissing on you if you were on fire. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, I'm getting my hole the night. <laughs> Anybody I want. What the hell are you on about, man? Flavoured condoms. Fla the hell use of bloody flavoured condoms to people our age? Specifically designed for people our age, eh? I'll get you a look at them here now. I'll go in there and push them out. There we are. Now, mint imperial. Oh. Barley sugar. Oh, Scotch broth. Oh. Right. 
yummy, yummy. Oh, beat the hell. <laughs> Dusty climb. You think a big one's still talking to me? Oh, aye, she's a good sort, Jack, she's a good sort. Here, sweetheart, do you know break a heart? Oh, break a heart. Oh, if you're going to break a heart, be sure to break a fat girl's heart. They're bigger, <laughs> much bigger. If you're going to ruin someone's life, be sure they're not a scale. You know this, I? Oh, skinny girls are fine, but when you dump them, they just run and find another. <laughs> oh, but when you crush a chubby's heart, she remains with all the fatties on the shelf. That shelf is creaking. She remains with all the fatties on the shelf. Special night tonight. We don't we haven't said that to anybody else except for us through the week. Um, <laughs> but obviously they're filming it tonight. You've been brilliant. It's been brilliant. But the last time Greg and I were here was at uh, the pantomime and uh, at the Kings here. And uh, what they do at the end of a traditional thing that we didn't know about, have never done a panto before. Uh, they have a song sheet. Well, they bring a song sheet in and everybody joins in. It's a bit, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> so if you could help us out by saying. Bring down the clues. Bring, bring down the clues. Bring down the clues. Oh no! Bring down the clues. Majesty's home for the blind. You can see in and feel them, they really don't mind. His Majesty's home for the blind. Hey, no, no, no. Majesty's home for the blind. His Majesty's home for the blind. You can see in 
Ladies and gentlemen, the fact has left the building. <laughs>